By the end of this video, you'll know how to use the point command in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The point command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list or from the right click sketch menu. As with any of the sketch commands, you'll need to select either an origin plane, a construction plane, or some pre-existing geometry to create the sketch on. For now, I'll simply select the XY origin plane. Using the sketch point tool is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is simply click once with your mouse to place a sketch point. You'll notice that sketch points will snap into the grid as long as you have the sketch grid and the snap options checked in the sketch palette. Sketch points can be utilized in a number of different ways to help you better create your sketch geometry. Let's take a look at some popular ways that the point command is used. To start off, let's take a look at how a sketch point can help better create fit point splines. I'll start off by adding a reference image. I'll select Attached Canvas from the Insert dropdown list. Then I'll select the XY plane for the face option. Next, you'll have to click to select the image from your local machine. I'm going to select this base image that I'll link to down below in the video description. I'm going to scale the image up and I'll click and drag on the square to place it away from these other sketch points. Then I'll simply click OK in the dialog box. At this point, I want to set some points on the edge of this base silhouette that will give me a template to follow when using the spline tool. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra to bring up the sketch shortcuts box. Then I can simply type out the word point and I can select it or click enter on my keyboard to activate the point tool. Now this sketch shortcuts box is a great way to save time and to speed up your workflow as you don't have to drag your mouse up to the toolbar every single time that you need to activate a sketch or modeling command. Now where you place the points is really up to you, but I found that keeping the points evenly spaced helps, as well as placing most of the points at the areas where the curvature changes. Now I'll activate the Fit Point Spline tool from the Spline Flyout folder that's located in the Sketch dropdown list. With the fit point spline active, I'm going to select the first point at the bottom and work my way towards the top, clicking each point in order. If I zoom in just a bit, you'll notice that the spline is already pretty accurate. There's maybe just a few points here that could use some tweaking. And those sketch points allow me to create the spline extremely fast without getting caught up in how the spline is bending while placing each point. For comparison, I'll create another fit point spline on the other side. You'll see that I'm able to create a similar result. It just takes me a little bit longer, even factoring in the time it took to create the initial sketch points. And this concept really comes in handy when you have complex geometry that you're trying to trace or to recreate. To take this concept even further, you can dimension or constrain your sketch points before creating the spline, which will give you an even more accurate spline. Another use case for the sketch point tool would be adding a point in order to constrain it to something. I'll click on this other file tab where I've gone ahead and set up this circle and a rectangle. Now in some scenarios, you may need to constrain or move sketch geometry ensuring that a specific point lines up with other sketch geometry. If I reactivate the sketch point tool and turn the snap option back on, you'll see that as I hover over the circle, 
I can place a point anywhere. I'll simply click to place the point on the circle. I can now use this point to freely move the sketch geometry around by clicking and dragging at the point. I can also use the point to constrain the circle to the rectangle. I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'll select the point on the circle and I'll select the corner of the rectangle. Then I'll right click to select the coincident constraint. After selecting coincident, you'll notice that the circle was immediately constrained to the rectangle. It's important to note that the point tool can come in handy in a variety of ways when working with sketch geometry. The scenarios that I'm demoing are just a few of the ways that you can utilize the point tool. Another helpful scenario or use case of the sketch point tool would be using the points to add more dimensions to your sketch geometry. If I pan to the right, you'll notice I have another rectangle set up that already has a few sketch points. If I activate the Sketch Dimension tool from the Sketch drop-down list, I can click on the point and the corner of this rectangle, and you'll see that I'm able to dimension this geometry in a way that I wouldn't be able to without the point. So the point tool can be useful when you decide you need to add more dimensions later on, especially if you're trying to fully constrain your sketches. If you have any additional ways that you find the sketch point command to be helpful, then go ahead and let the community know in the comments below. In summary, you'll find the sketch point tool to be a valuable asset when creating sketch geometry. With just a simple click of the mouse, you can place additional points that give you even more control over your sketches. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.